Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Spooky Season. It is October 1st, and we thought, what do we introduce Spooky Season with? A topic about ghostwriting, of course. Perfect. <laughs> we're so clever. So clever. So today we're going to be talking about why or why not ghostwriting. So we're going to talk about ghostwriting, what it is, what it isn't, and why you might want to consider hiring a ghostwriter for your book. So let's start with the basic basics. What are ghostwriters, Erin? Well, many of you might know ghostwriters are writers for hire. So mm -hmm. they get paid, but they don't receive any credit for their work. In other words, one person writing in the name of another just like a ghost, a ghostwriter's name does not appear in the byline or on the cover as an author. And ghostwriters are most often experienced authors in their own right and have the skills and expertise to write a successful book. So they're professional writers, which means they have an immense amount of time it takes to complete a book, very important. And so it's not something they do on the side. And they also, of course, have that experience. And what types of works are ghostwritten? ebooks, speeches, blog posts, newsletters, and yes, even entire books. Awesome. So who hires the ghostwriters in the process? Lots of people, mm -hmm. celebrities, athletes, CEOs, high-level executives, politicians, all of these types of people can use ghostwriters to write their books. Really anyone who has a message or a story they want to get across to readers but they might not have the writing skills or experience or the time. To, and so therefore they wanna consider hiring a ghostwriter who has the skills and the time. And you know what, even fiction writers use ghostwriters for their book. Um, for instance, when a, once a series is created and the characters are well-developed, like James Patterson does this, um, it's easy to bring in a ghostwriter to help write new books because do you ever wonder how some of these best-selling authors are coming out with a book or even more every year? ghostwriters. <laughs> yes. So another cool thing about ghostwriters are there's so many, there's so many in every different genre. And it's, it's essentially when I explain this to people, it's for people who are usually way too busy that they, they don't like, they can't sit down to write their book. Like they have an extremely busy lifestyle. They want to get a book out. They just simply don't have the time. Okay. Or if it's like a time sensitive kind of thing, like maybe a politician who is trying to get things out before an election, those sometimes um, will be good candidates for ghostwriters as well. So it really just depends on um, A, how comfortable you are writing, B, your time frame, and C, um, whether or not you want to write the book. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so why hire a ghostwriter, Erin? Well, as you just touched upon, so many people have a strong message or a story, but not everyone has the experience or the skills to write. And so they partner with a ghostwriter to get their message out there. So when CEOs, executive celebrities, all these other people, they don't naturally possess stellar writing chops. And the message they want to get out to readers is going to suffer because of that, even though it's a really strong message. Mm -hmm. um, so after all, should readers only hear stories from excellent writers? I mean, people have stories and messages to share and they're strong and they want to reach people. But often those messages they need to share aren't as engaging because of a lack of writing skills. So that's when a ghostwriter comes in to effectively reach those readers. And ghostwriters can be a major asset specifically for business people and entrepreneurs. And why is this? Well, you can be an expert in your profession and that's really powerful. And often the best way to accomplish this expertise is by publishing a relevant book. Mm -hmm. However, when you're running a successful business and you're being a good leader, that doesn't necessarily mean you can effectively articulate your message or what you wanna share with readers, nor do you have the time as you discussed. And so that's when you wanna consider hiring a ghostwriter. So powerful business people, the CEOs, the celebrities, all of these thought leaders with strong messages, they realize if they're smart, most of them all are, they wouldn't be where they are. They realize that sloppy writing is going to ref reflect badly on their personal image or the company's image and brand. And it's going to deteriorate what was a really strong message. Yeah, so and the credibility just goes down too with that as well. Exactly, exactly. So Getting your thoughts down clearly in writing is difficult. It's difficult even for the best writers uh, who have experience. And so many leaders or celebrities, business people struggle with the written word. 
but the public still wants to hear from these top tier executives, entrepreneurs, the stars of the show. Um, as you mentioned, another reason to hire a ghostwriter, of course, is time. Writing a book takes a lot of time. And many of these people, especially if they're powerful, busy people, they don't have time. And ghostwriters can devote all of their free time to the project, not free time, that's what they're paid to do. So whether they're writing that solo or they're working in tandem the entire time with the publicly named author, they have that time. You're paying them for that time. So that's why so many powerful people, again, celebrities, best-selling authors, CEOs, they hire ghostwriters. They don't have a year or so to devote solely to writing the book. So they need to hire someone that does have that time. Yeah. And something that I just want to really quickly touch on, Erin, is um, we offer two services at Green Link Book Group. Um, we often offer spoken draft and we do offer the authors the option to hire a ghostwriter. Can you explain just the differences between the two? Because they are kind of similar. Right. Well, a ghostwriter is really when someone else is coming in and the author is either working with them telling them the stories, telling them the message, and then they're translating it. And they are pretty much just writing the entire book on your behalf. With spoken draft, that's um, really when the author is definitely not working with another writer, but they're able to, with editors, uh, work together in order to obviously verbally get across their message. And then the editor is kind of helping them craft it but they still have kind of a rudimentary writing skills. And so it really is the author there, but we're just helping get that message out of them um, using spoken word. So it's, yes. it's a, it, it is a difference because definitely with a ghostwriter, you're putting it into their hands and you're saying, okay, here's my stories now, take it away, mm -hmm. write it. And uh, with spoken draft, you're, the author is telling their message, but they're gonna be doing more of the writing themselves in the end. Yeah, and so this is a question I answer for authors a large majority of the time, the differences between the two. And I like to kind of compare um, spoken draft to, that's really popular amongst our speakers. So those who are more eloquent in speaking exactly. their book rather than writing the book. And it's exactly. not just some kind of like handing it over and saying, write it, here's what I have go at it it's more so the collaborative process of speaking about your experiences and then the editor editor will do their magic and fine tune it um in that regard exactly and and one of the things that ghostwriters are really good at however is um getting the author's tone of voice and what they sound like so if you do hire a really good ghostwriter they're going to be able to capture your voice and translate that onto the page for sure so what does a ghostwriter bring to the table? Um, in addition to the content, obviously, they're creating for the book, the ghostwriter can also help shape the branding and tone, uh, as I was just saying, of clients, even their marketing materials, such as websites, social media, to ensure consistency across the board. So even if someone has a strong message or story, if people aren't going to relate on an emotional level or they aren't engaged, there's really no point. You're not going to get your message across effectively. Totally. And I'm sorry. I said totally. <laughs> oh, I'm, like, What's happening? <laughs> um, I'm hanging on your every word. Uh, so many ghostwriters for, like I mentioned, blogs, newsletters, other online content. They also know uh, a lot about search engine optimization, SEO. And so they're well-versed at using these really strong keywords when they're writing so that your message is going to reach the largest number of readers, which is really helpful. Absolutely. SEO, huge. So is hiring a ghostwriter ethical? Yeah, a lot of people are kind of thinking, oh, it's plagiarizing, it's cheating, da, da, da. But really, when you're looking at it, it, it really depends on the intent of the publicly credited author and the impact on the readers. So for instance, if the publicly credited author is the expert, you're the expert and you want to impart your wisdom, that's your intent, and you're simply hiring someone to bring your experience, subject knowledge to the reader in a more engaging way, the reader's getting what they paid for. So the impact on the reader is positive. Um, however, if you do submit a book to a publisher, always reveal that you used a ghostwriter because that's when you can get into ethical, even legal issues. Um, 
And also just kind of as a side note, don't feel bad for ghostwriters. <laughs> like they're just these uncredited people. Um, they're making lots of money. They're very well paid. A lot of them in their own right are publishing under their own name. So they're not being deprived of, of a flourishing this writing This is what career. they do. <laughs> it's what yeah. they do. They're well compensated and they get to work with really interesting people too. So it's actually a great gig. If, if you're interested in that side of it and you're a writer, look into ghostwriting. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So what is our assignment for this week, Erin? Yeah, this is just a fun one. Um, as I was kind of doing some research for this topic, I went down a few rabbit holes. So I invite you to do the same as well. And just search online for which of your favorite authors, either in the past or now, are using ghostwriters. And I think you'd be a bit surprised. You know, people like Michael Crichton, as I mentioned, James Patterson, but not only fiction, but, you know, you, you always think of the big celebrities. You kind of assume they're using ghostwriters or, or maybe people don't. But um, yeah, just do a search, kind of uh, go on a little adventure and see who's using ghostwriters, who isn't. Awesome. And so our team kind of came up with a fun little campaign for October since it is spooky season. We're going to make October all about ghostwriting. So actually next week I'm sitting down with Kevin Anderson of Kevin Anderson and Associates. He is a really successful ghostwriter out of New York City. Um, ha his, he has a whole team wonderful team. We work with them a lot here at Greenleaf. Um, and I will be sitting down with him and asking him doing a QA and a over ghostwriting. So you'll get to hear exactly from a ghostwriter, kind of what his experience are and things like that. So if you have any questions you'd like me to ask Kevin, just feel free to leave a comment or send me a DM and I'll include them in the Q and A, but that's something to look forward to next week. And of course we will see you guys next time. Thank you for tuning in. Bye.